We're now up to the stage of the hotbed. I haven't come to put the kettle on, but I have come to use the stove. The hotbed has got three pads on it. On the left hand side there is two pads. They are number three, so that's two and three. That's a negative. And on the right hand side there's a longer pad, numbered one, and that's a positive. That's where you solder your wires on. Now in the kit there are two bundles of wire. One particularly is just all red, and the other one is red and white. This is the wires you use for the hot end, the extension. I've finished the wiring of the main body of the printer now and for the extension I cut about 3 mil, stripped that back, slightly fanned it out then on the other woven cable I cut 3 mil again and I fanned that out. And the reason for that is I then fanned it and fanned it and pushed it in to lock it together, squashed it back and then soldered it together as these pictures show. So it's a solid joint rather than wrapping one wire around the other that makes it larger. So that's now small and compact and will fit through the drilled hole and that is what I've done there. So the other wire that may have silicon in it is more the high temperature wire and that's soldered to the bottom of the hotbed. Now when I tin the end of thicker cable I like to use a solder pot. You can watch my other video on how to use a solder pot but basically it's a pot you buy the big chunk of solder break it up put it in there switch it on melt it the pot just melts the solder and it's permanently hot and if you have a lot of wiring to do especially if you do any wiring for radio control or quads that type of thing strip it put it in five seconds and it's solder. If you use a soldering iron sometimes the heat doesn't get all the way through, the solder doesn't get through. Very quick, very good and well, well worth the money. So what I've done on these cables is I first dunk them in the solder pot. So they were nice and tinned, nice and thick. The trouble is this is an aluminium plate and as you know aluminium transfers heat fairly quickly. So if you sit there with your small electronic soldering iron you'll be there forever. I happen to have one of these larger tipped soldering irons. This is a 60 water broad tip. So I like to use that to do the soldering on the larger wires. Get yourself some flux. I bought a one litre container. This unfortunately stays sticking, is very hard to clean up. Doesn't clean up with thinners or turps, that sort of thing. But you use one drop, so I think about the year 2099 I would have finished the bottle so just buy a small one. I just use the thin solder. This has got the flux in already but I like to use the flux. Get yourself set up. Then what you do on the stove, some people can use a heat gun. You can wrap this in plastic bag, shove it in a bucket and pour hot water on it. But the idea is to get the aluminium up to working temperature. So all I did was turn on the gas stove. So that sat on there like that, turned on the gas left my hand on it as it got hotter I then knew it was for temperature I had put a drop, a tiny drop and smeared it over with a match stick on all those three pads and this melts, uh, bubbles fairly quickly so if, it's, if that's bubbling it's too hot I then put it on there, laid the, I'm right handed so I soldered from the left hand side first placed a little uh, pair of pliers to hold the cable in position and just solder it. Quite easy. The second one you have two pads. So I soldered the furthest away one first and when that was in position I then soldered that one. And because the plate was hot and it had the plier sitting on it, it has pushed the plastic down. So as you can see they don't really drop away that much. Now there's a reason for that and there's a reason why I've got the wires going up that way. When it fits into the printer it will sit around and go back into the terminal blocks where it's screwed to. So if I want to remove the hotbed I can lift it up and there it is. If they were coming back this way the wires would then go back and then have to do crossover because the negative and the positives are on the, you'll see that that's the match up so they don't cross over. Also you make it flat because you have to fit your thermistor. That's the temperature probe. That's a little ball on the end that you can hardly see. This particular one they give you a good length. You could cut this off and solder it to the hot end thermistor to extend the 
lead there if you wanted to so even though it doesn't show you in the manual you fit that to the plate so as it touches now I will just fit it under one of these leads to lock it in position and hold it there with a bit of camped on tape but the thing is you don't use heat shrink because that will melt onto the hot plate when you when it's at its maximum temperature so what you do is you just wrap the lead around underneath shove a piece of camped on tape to hold it in position and then once you get past the hotbed you then put your heat shrink on that way so that's how you solder up your hotbed try not to scratch the surface make sure your wiring is secure and then you just have to cut it and I'll just cut these to length and then just dunk them into the solder pot. So that's the stage you're up to and the end is getting very close. Now I've changed the layout of the heated plate, the hotbed. Uh, the reason for that is that I had the cabling running off it and long enough to allow the bed to sit up so as I could get access to the electronics. But looking through I noticed that the cable would curve up onto the actual bottom of the bed because this gets hot and the cabling may melt and that sort of thing and also the other problem is that stop a barrier from the heat off your hotbed going onto your electronics so what I come up with uh, is the heat shield you may have seen the polar emissions coming back and they have the heat shield on the bottom and it goes through the atmosphere well there's our ceramic well, it's more like the type you find on the Land Rovers in Africa. You might see underneath the roof rack, they'll have a sheet of aluminium a couple of inches above the roof, and that's to allow the convection currents and uh, insulation to sort of be between the roof and the actual heat shield. Each time I would pull the hotbed up and put it there, the, the mister would come a bit unstuck from the tape and, and it was always awkward. So I decided to cut the cabling and what I've done now is, if you can see here, I've got the small bullet connectors and on the cabling that comes from the ramp spool, I've got the female one. Remember the female is one of the hole, male is with the one that sticks out and then this has got the one sticking out. The reason for that is, if there's any power, if they were carrying power and you touched them, they'd arc out. This way, it's fine. I've made it short, because the connector is just as long, and that's to feed through a hole in the middle and go under the heat shield. Now, to work out the dimensions of the heat shield, get, just get yourself a, there's a wheat bix container, put it on, get your scissors, cut a bit off, fold a bit, cut a bit off, stick bits you've cut off with uh, sticky tape until you have had the shape. I then got a ruler, ran the ruler to touch the on that side, marked it, marked it, marked it. And then I just drew up a little rectangle on where the ruler touch and that's where the main connection for the cabling would enter in through. So I then marked that. So I then just go in your CAD program, measure it up, you know if it's 112.5 you make it on 12 and so you round it all up, make it all nice and neat. Then what I did was I just went on with the DXF file and I made up a laser cut template and you just half burn the fold line. So this here you cut and there you only half burn and that just allows you to fold it. And as these photos showed, I just got a bit of shim aluminium and stuck it down, sticky tape, guillotined all the corners off, got the tim snips, cut out the recess, that's the recess to clear the, the nuts there, cut the recess out, got a chisel, which is the same size as a slot, and just hammered it on a piece of steel and that cut through the aluminium fine. Then I just went on the folder, folded the edges up, and where I wanted to do the other side, I just put in the vise, so a vise will do, and then just fold the ones up and ones down. Then had the finished aluminium heat shield. Here are the edges to locate. I've had these corners up at 45. The reason for that is when it fits in and the air is blowing with the fan underneath there's a gap in between there and that allows the hot air or the cooling air to come up and not affect the hot bed. I've also put in some bits of plastic uh, off a soft drink bottle, a couple of vents that push down my cabling 
I've got the cabling all now uh, wrapped in the uh, expanding sleeve, colour coded, and so that allows the air to flow through, helps keep the cables down low from the heat bed. Got the slight, slight angle to guide the cabling, and that just simply is fed in through there. There's the cutouts that match the screws. Made it wider because the actual you could have a hole, but the spring actually sits in the bottom, well, on top of the, the nut in the bottom of the channel. If you have it sitting say on the plate, that may be eight, 10 millimeters high, harder pressure. And then it's just a matter of connecting the cables and down it goes and tighten them up. So then when I want to remove the hotbed, I just undo the screws as for normal and lift the whole unit up and there's enough length of the cable to fit in and hang over the side. The thermist has got the Dupont connector on it so it comes off as a unit. There it is, all nicely done. Now if you don't have sheet metal folders, cutters, you can use thin stuff and just cut it with tin snips that sort of stuff. But even if you don't have that, just get yourself some aluminium foil and your camp on tape and you can make yourself your own space blanket. So you would just cut out your piece of uh, aluminium, that shape, put it all on the table, put your tape across, then just peel off the tape, slide out your piece of uh, cardboard as your template and then just fold the lips over and then that will sit there and you can just keep it in place with a piece of tape or you could even just glue in a couple of those uh, 100 for 5 bucks, 3 mil by 1 mil magnets and then that can just fit in there and just put a piece of steel in there and it will just locate in position. Heat shield for me because I'm having electronics on the bottom adds a bit more, makes it look a bit better and gives me a bit better peace of mind. I've got the temper gauge at the top going in underneath between the cables so that's giving me a reading all the time. Once I've finished calibrating I shouldn't have to remove the hot bed anymore and it should be sweet.